Good afternoon. Welcome to a episode of Business in Hawaii. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama, and we delve into many topics, often about Hawaii, but sometimes about global issues and places all over the world. Today, we have a special guest, Kanzo Nara, who is the past president of the Hokkaido Club Hawaii. And we're going to talk about our favorite place, aside from Hawaii, which is the island, the northern island of Hokkaido. I think many people in Hawaii have heard about Hokkaido. Some from Hawaii have visited Hokkaido as tourists, and others are looking at Hokkaido for possible business opportunities. Welcome to the show. Mr. Thank you, Tsuchiyama san, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm uh, Kanzo Nara, as mentioned, from the Hokkaido Club Hawaii. So, what is your relationship with Hokkaido? Ah, well, I was born and raised there in Hokkaido, and uh, I moved here in 2000. So, interestingly, I spent half my life in Hokkaido and half my life in Hawaii now. Well, you're a young man, so it's going to be a more, yeah, yeah, more, in, more, more <laughs> in Hawaii pretty soon. So, let's, let's, uh, let's geographically position Hokkaido where it is, okay? okay. And, and how it's unique compared to the rest of Japan, how... Uh, most of the world or Americans look at Japan as a very crowded place with lots of uh, big cities and urban areas. Uh, what is Hokkaido and where is it and, and, and uh, seasonally, how does it differ from the rest of Japan? Okay, well, Hokkaido is the most uh, northern island of Japan. Uh, it's north of Honshu, so the long main island. It's right. at the very tip of that. And uh, interestingly, it's only 26 miles south of Russia. Wow. So we're actually closer to uh, Russia than we are to Tokyo. Right. Yeah, and uh, we have very distinctive seasons. You know, uh, the winter gets to cold enough to be uh, minus 40 degrees Celsius, which yeah, right. right now, <laughs> February, early March right. is right around that right. time. So we're having a very uh, cold winter this year with a lot of snow. And, and, of, and Hokkaido statistically has about 5.5 million people. And of course, Tokyo itself has 10 million people. Yes. <laughs> so, so half of uh, Tokyo can fit into Hokkaido very easily. Uh, and with 22% of the uh, land mass in Japan. Uh, and let's see now. So uh, how is Hokkaido different historically than the rest of Japan? Because uh, from my family's history, uh, my ancestors came from the northernmost tip of Honshu called Aomori. And that's where I was also born, by coincidence. And they left Aomori uh, to, uh, uh, to land in southern Hokkaido, in the Hakodate area, in the 1720s, what we would call the Genroku Jidai, or the Genroku mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, they were part of the Matsumai clan, yeah. or Matsumai Han. And that was the early, uh, so we are very early uh, settlers in Japan, I mean, from, from what is Japan currently, but actually uh, it was Honshu and a very small clan at, at the tip of uh, Honshu, the Matsumai clan. And then they kind of went north, uh, north and my family settled in an area called Esashi. And in fact, the village is Kaminokuni. And that's where they were uh, to this day, from the 1720s and 30s until today. And they're mostly farmers or fishermen uh, uh, with uh, herring and sardines of the niching of that, of that area. So uh, we've been there for a long time, but until the Meiji period of the 1860s, there was a line that, uh, uh, that uh, they could not cross over. And the rest of Hokkaido was called Ezo, which was populated by a, a distinctly different ethnic group called the Ainu. Could you just uh, uh, comment on this? Yeah. Yes, well, the Ainu people are uh, indigenous to Hokkaido, much like the native Hawaiians or the Inuits or uh, you know, the Mongolian tribes of northern China. Uh, they were there for, for centuries, right. you know, yeah. uh, and they had their own uh, culture. But the, the, much like the other, other indigenous tribes, is they didn't have a written language. Uh, they passed down uh, history orally. Uh, they had a lot of... Uh, Animism. Right. They practiced animism. Yeah. So a lot of uh, animal sacrifices. That's right. The or, worship of the bear or yeah, salmon. Worship the bear, uh, yeah, right. salmon, yeah, mountains, the forest, the rivers. So, yeah. Yeah. so they were, they were uh, in large numbers around the 
Early 1500s, 1600s, and that's when the first Japanese settlers started moving into uh, Hokkaido. And the Japanese weren't called Japanese then. Right, they were called right. Wajin oh, in Hokkaido, right, right, yeah. which means like the Oriental people. Right. <laughs> Interestingly. <laughs> but, but of course, uh, when you say Oriental people, yeah. even today, there are some Ainu people with blue eyes or uh, with uh, brown oh, hair. Oh, yes, yes, that, that's and correct. And they're different yeah. physically yes. than what we would call Japanese. Yes, yeah. yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, yeah, ethnically speaking, yeah, they're not of uh, uh, Japanese DNA, right. traditional Japanese DNA. They probably have more of the, like, northern Mongolian side, just like uh, southern Russia has Ainu, too, like That's I was right. mentioning. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, your, your family side, where are they from uh, in Hokkaido? Yeah. Oh, interestingly, they're the same from where you are, <laughs> right. Aomori. Yeah. Yeah. My uh, great-great-grandfather uh, moved to Hokkaido in the... Late 1800s. Wow, okay. Yeah, late right. 1800s. So that would be probably the mid Meiji period right, right. from uh, northern Aomori right. to just like you mentioned, southern Hokkaido. And that was a period of great immigration to Hawaii too. To, yes, from that Kumamoto is and Yamaguchi. Yeah, and yeah, so just, at just the like, same time, people are moving toward Hokkaido. Mm -hmm. There's a wave coming to, uh, to Hawaii. Yes, yeah, so just like I uh, mentioned, uh, I mean, last year was the 150th anniversary of the Ganemono. Interestingly, Hokkaido was celebrating its 150th anniversary of becoming Hokkaido. Right. Hokkaido became Hokkaido in 1868, mm, and prior right. to that, it was called Ezo, like you That's mentioned. Right. So uh, a lot of immigration happened during that period, and a lot of, uh, I guess, people in the northern part of Honshu right. moved to Hokkaido. Right. And also the, the clans that lost in the war oh, of the Meiji right, Restoration right, right. Yeah. ended up in Hokkaido. Right. And a lot of the southern clans like you know, Choshu, right. Satsuma ended up in government positions. <laughs> so people who weren't yeah. able to join the federal government right, kind right. of ended up in Hokkaido. But you know, it's an interesting point. Uh, as you know, the, uh, the French uh, supported the Bakufu, uh, the mm -hmm. Tokugawa shogunate, and there were uh, several uh, French mercenaries or uh, assisting the Bakufu uh, army, and they had a Republic of Ezo for a few months, and they kind of fled out the Hakodate, yes, and yes, then the Meiji uh, Navy yeah. and army mm -hmm. conquered uh, yeah. uh, that fort and uh, that was the end of the uh, bakufu yeah. forever and the major government took mm -hmm. over so so interestingly uh, there was a confluence of all kinds of groups but well, let's move on to, t to the first photo please oh yeah, where is this uh this is bie which is pretty much the very center of hokkaido wow yeah, so uh, it, it is close to uh, Furano, where every, the right. lavender is very famous. That's it's right. about an hour north of there. And it's also close to where the uh, blue pond is, the right. Aoi Ike. And this is right around November, so you can see the, the colors changing in the trees. Right. And if you look at the mountain, it's already snowing there, right. but that's <laughs> November. That's right. Yeah, so, so, November. so as our viewers can see, it's as if they're watching, seeing something in, in uh, Washington State or, or British Columbia, rather than in what they feel is Japan and, and, and uh, crowded, uh, crowded areas uh, in, in the islands. But this gives, uh, I think, viewers an indication of how uh, different Hokkaido is, uh, it, it's a na very nature-focused place when you yes, think about it. Yes, that's yeah. correct. Uh, like you mentioned, the population is 5.5 million for the entire island, yeah. but 2 million of that lives in the center part of Sapporo. Right. So basically, if you leave Sapporo, you're pretty much in <laughs> you know, the countryside <laughs> right. and you know, nothing's out there. You know. Next photo, please. Oh, and, and this is still winter. Go ahead. Uh, no, this is actually uh, November. It's oh, November. the same oh. season. This is, this is very close to the first picture. Yeah, this yeah. is the Blue Pond. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. This is Amazing. actually a new uh, yeah. place you could visit. Yeah, I, I've never really heard of this place before. Yeah, Yeah. so this didn't exist, yeah. uh, I, I would say maybe 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't there. Wow. And what happened was uh, they made reservoirs of water oh, nearby wow. in oh. case of... Uh, Mountain eruptions, right, right. so they yeah. had water reserves. So that changed the water flow and the and it turned it into a Gee. natural wow. water reserve. Very beautiful. That unbelievable. Almost uh, looks like northern Europe. That's right, oh. or like Finland or Sweden Definitely, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, very much. Uh, next photo, please. Oh, what is this? <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorite places. Okay. Yeah, this is in uh, Yoichi Nika, which right. is about a half an hour east of Otaru. Yeah. Uh, many people know of Nika Whiskina because right. of the popular TV uh, very, show. Very, very big. Uh, popular, uh, the ago. Scottish uh, woman who accompanied yes, yes, uh, the, uh, yes. the spouse uh, to Hokkaido. Yes, so yeah. Mr. Taketsuru, who went to yeah. uh, Ireland to study, uh, I'm sorry, Scotland to study whiskey making, you know, returned back and he was looking for the best place to brew right. scotch and he found Hokkaido Yoichi. 
uh, that was right around the turn of the century, and he started making uh, Taketsuru Nikka. Anyway, the, the barrels you see in the picture are actually uh, older than 50 years. Wow. And they haven't, they're, they're not opening it yet. So I'm waiting for them to open it to uh, drink a uh, 60 year old scotch. <laughs> so you have to go, <laughs> go there immediately. But this is interesting because, you know, when you think of uh, uh, Japan, you don't think of whiskey, which is very European. But there are many things about Hokkaido that are, are Western or not, you know, traditionally Japan. Because when you go to Kyoto, there are places there that are a thousand years old or a thousand more than that. Uh, in in uh, Hokkaido, there's nothing really new. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, old. Yes, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Everything began starting in the, in the late, uh, you know, 19th century. Yes. In fact, uh, really, uh, uh, some parts didn't uh, uh, grow as suburbs of the city until, the, you know, after the war, uh, Sapporo itself. Uh, and so, but in the uh, 1870s, when the Meiji government wanted to uh, modernize Japan, they invited a very famous professor named Dr. William Clark. And he was from the University of Massachusetts, what became the University of Massachusetts, where I'm a graduate of. And he introduced uh, modern agriculture, yes. dairy farming and all kinds of other uh, 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 farming to Hokkaido. And that really... Uh, uh, launched uh, agriculture in Hokkaido. And as we know, uh, Hokkaido is famous for melons, strawberries, white asparagus, potatoes, uh, really great potatoes, <laughs> uh, dairy, uh, I mean, uh, cheese, milk. What else uh, is there? Uh, well, dairy is a very famous yeah. one, especially the, the milk and cheese was very new to the Japanese people at right. the time during the Meiji Restoration. But the, the most significant thing about uh, Professor Clark right. is he was only there for six months. Wow. So yeah. his uh, time teaching was very short. Yeah, yeah. But the biggest contribution he made was the people that followed him. Ah, so right. he would introduce his yeah. former students right. to go to Hokkaido and ah. teach things, like Horace Kepler, right, who right. Oh. Uh, designed the first iron stove oh, for Hokkaido. Wow. Uh, he had another uh, apprentice of his who moved from Massachusetts to Hokkaido, and he stayed there for actually a good 10 years, I think. He's the one who brought the first cows. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it's a Clark who initiated yeah, yeah, right, a lot of these right. programs, but the people that followed him yeah. afterwards were the actual ones who implemented right. it a lot. So and, and I've heard that the uh, city of Sapporo, which is the capital city of uh, Hokkaido, it was laid out, uh, a master plan by an American architect. Is that true or some design? Uh, yes and no. There was yeah. a Japanese architect uh, included too, but it is uh, it is true that Sapporo is the only planned city oh, in Japan. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. it is very easy to find That's streets right. in Sapporo right. because the streets go north one two three right. four five, right. east one two three yeah, four five. Yeah. And you can, you know, basically spit out an address and find it. Uh, uh, again, uh, that's uh, so uh, different than Kyoto or Tokyo. You, can't you have find to carry a map. Tokyo, yeah. <laughs> you have you to carry a map exactly where you're going, or ask people or the koban, the policeman, where, where you're going, because this is uh, uh, so so difficult. The address system in, in Japan, but Hokkaido, very different. Uh, it had uh, roots uh, from. Uh, Western uh, modern design. So we're going to take a break right now and return with uh, Nara-san to really delve even more into tourism and business in Hokkaido. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show and is streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. We are back with Nara-san in another episode of Business in Hawaii. We are talking about Hokkaido, the northernmost island of Japan, a vacation wonderland, uh, especially during winter, but especially in summer. Uh, uh, and Skiing is really, really big in, in Hokkaido, which we will talk about even more, but it has some world-class uh, skiing uh, uh, destinations. And of course, it was the uh, venue for the Winter Olympics going back to the 70s. 
and which also launched many, many new tourist destinations throughout Hokkaido, including the world famous Niseko. And Niseko is uh, so popular that it uh, has attracted, in the early days, uh, in, in the 90s and 2000s, Australians and New Zealanders, now people from Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Taiwan. Uh, so again, there's a lot of global interest in Hokkaido. Next photo, please. Oh, we're, we're continuing with Nika Whiskey here. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's inside the museum of Nika Whiskey. And that, that's yeah. their first design bottle. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the picture of that because that's yeah. the main picture right. when, you see, when you go to Suskino. That's right. It's up on the gonna, neon side. I, I was yeah. just going to say that. It is, it is an iconic, uh, uh, it's kind of like a king or uh, Henry VIII kind yeah, his of... His uh, nickname is actually the uncle in the, with the red beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he must uh, be very happy uh, sipping a liquor whiskey. But uh, again, uh, this is a uh, whole um, uh, area of uh, products that uh, I would not have realized would happen in Hokkaido uh, on, you know, uh, when I was a child, which was a very different uh, place. Next photo, please. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is the Sapporo factory, which was initially the beer factory for Sapporo beer. Well, was converted to a large shopping mall back in the, I believe, late 80s. Yeah, so right now it's called Sapporo Factory, and it's a large uh, shopping mall like Alamona Shopping Center. Yeah. And of course, this is uh, fall, right? Yes, this yeah, is yeah, fall time. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see yeah. the brilliant colors yeah. of the... And you uh, can see the star mark at top of the that's building, right, and that's, that's right. the Sapporo beer icon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and wasn't Sapporo the earliest beer introduced to Japan? Uh, uh, I, I think it might have been the earliest domestic beer. Domestic I think beer. the okay. first one brought in was, I think it might have been Kirin. Okay, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, so again, uh, Western things came through Hokkaido. Yes. Beer, whiskey, yes. Uh, dairy farming, milk. I even remember, you know, trap up smunk uh, candies. <laughs> yes, and hakodate, <laughs> and, very and, famous. And, and sausages and hakodate. No. I mean, there's many, many things that uh, you would think are, are Western, but uh, really rooted in Hokkaido for the past yes. 100, 150 years. So, mm. so Hokkaido is a very unique place. Um, so, and, and, and uh, Tell me about um, uh, what's been happening with Hawaii and Hokkaido, uh, the history of what evolved to be a sister state relationship. Okay, well, uh, we became sister states with Hawaii in 2017, May. But the process to that took uh, uh, quite a few years, actually. Right. But it started with uh, the Hawaiian Airlines first flying to oh, Chitose. Right, right. Uh, then both uh, lieutenant and vice governors meeting here in Hawaii to celebrate the first uh, the flight coming through. And so on. And then we started getting uh, the exchange students. There's a, a few programs with local schools here. We had the Hokkaido uh, Technological Institute do an exchange program here with the local high schools. And uh, so on. So, uh, and following that, we've had uh, new businesses move into right. Hawaii. Like, uh, uh, you know, we have bakeries, restaurants from that's Hokkaido right. now. In, in fact, uh, Brug is, is, is from Hokkaido. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and uh, uh, the tonkatsu place called Tamafuji. Yes, is Tamafuji right. is from Hokkaido and, too. And, and uh, there's a ramen place called Santoku. Yes, right? Santoka and, and Santoka. also uh, Baiko Ken in Waikiki is oh, from, uh, wow. yeah, from Masashiko. And, and your friend has uh, Jimbo Udon? Yes, Jimbo Udon. He's from Hokkaido too. And he's from Furano, I think. Or? He's uh, near Furano, a little bit north from Akabira. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, you know, I love that Furano Obihiro area because it's flat. Flat, yeah, very flat. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's like a plane. You're yeah. living in Kansas City. And it's so unlike the rest of Japan. Uh, again, but on the other hand, there are seaports like Otaru or Hakodate, uh, uh, Kushiro or Shamanbe. Very good seafood. Yes. And, and I think that's why a lot of tourists go to Hokkaido because the quality of the seafood and the amount <laughs> that you get in restaurants are quite different in to than compared to Tokyo or other places. Yes. Well, Hokkaido, uh, j just because of the, the shape of the island and also the, the seas nearby, the currents that bring it in, especially like the Aleutian Islands and so on, uh, you get a really uh, rich right. seafood life. And right. it's a very uh, prosperous place for fishermen to be ever, you know, for, for uh, generations. You know. So there are some, you know, analogies or comparisons with Hawaii because Hokkaido's uh, economy is quite dominated by tourism. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Hokkaido is a very uh, popular tourist location, especially uh, during the, you know, February, during the winter festival. It's the largest snow festival in the world. 
Yeah, and it, uh, it goes on for quite a long time too, so it's very right. popular. I, I hear last year we had about uh, 2 million visitors wow. during that time. Yeah, so we had the entire population of Sapporo being there twice wow. during that period of time. That's great. <laughs> uh, next photo, please. Oh, okay, so this is, as you can see, this is a ski resort in the summertime. This oh, is a right, right. good example of, right. uh, you know, optimized right. tourism. Yes. This is, you can't go skiing in the summertime. Right. So what they did was they noticed the scenery at top of the mountain was so beautiful. Yes. It's called the Sea Mountain Terrace, <laughs> Terrace. Right, right. So you buy a ticket, go all the way up the mountain, and you get to see the... The sea, wow. the clouds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the right, catch is, right. is you can't see it every day. So, <laughs> right. yeah, but it's still a beautiful Hey, what part of Hokkaido is this? This is in Tomamu, yeah, which yeah. is about two hours northeast of Sapporo. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you talk about uh, place names uh, like Sapporo, and so they yes. have Ainu roots uh, to the yes. words. Yes, most Much of like them. in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, Bururang, you know, Sapporo, many, many uh, words come from uh, the Ainu language. Uh, again, another analogy with uh, Hawaii. Next, next. Uh, photo, please. Oh, yeah. This is also near uh, Tomamu. This is actually a famous uh, station that was used in a movie with Ken Takakura. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, uh, po uh, Popo's Popo, yeah. Yeah, Popo, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about an old train station, yeah. uh, coal mining city. Right. Yeah, right. It's very, it has a lot of Hokkaido history yeah. in it, too. And it's, uh, yeah, this is where they filmed the location of the film. Well, you can see how uh, Hokkaido was like uh, up till, you know, the 70s and 80s. Uh, many of the houses were uh, made of wood and, and uh, uh, had a, uh, you know, a stove inside. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very cold. It was very cold. Uh, and I was reminded uh, uh, during our previous conversation that uh, there's a uh, train stop or a, uh, uh, between uh, station between Sapporo and Chitose Airport called Kita Hiroshima. Yes. And of course, uh, that uh, was named for it migrants from Hiroshima yes. that came to uh, Hokkaido yes. during the Meiji period. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, Kita meaning north, so north, you know, north Hiroshima. Uh, it's as if there was, you know, Minami Hiroshima, <laughs> uh, a, a place named in Hawaii. But again, another analogy to, um, uh, to, uh, to Hawaii's history in Hokkaido. Uh, so uh, the the future of a Hokkaido uh, uh, Hawaii relationship. Uh, what do you think? There's be more uh, interest by tourists visiting uh, Hokkaido from Hawaii. Uh, people from Hokkaido coming to uh, uh, here. Uh, business opportunities. What, what are, well, what are I would ideas? say the greatest thing uh, we would like to focus on now is probably uh, pro you know product import export, mm. especially like in the uh, field of agriculture. Right. You know, both Hokkaido and Hawaii have agriculture that it kind of shares, like we both make onions, right. both yeah. make tomatoes, yeah. things like that. Uh, and because, you know, the extreme and weather conditions, right. you know, we have, you know, different sides of the same kind of product. And I think uh, exchange and product would be, uh, import-export oh. would be uh, something of the future we would like to, you know, focus on more. And I think businesses are starting to pay more attention to. Well, that's fantastic. You know, uh, my... Uh family's been in uh, agriculture in such a community area for many many years and and about until about 20 years ago the rice grown in hokkaido was not that good recently yeah. it's yeah. number one <laughs> yeah. and it's uh, uh sake brewing of course mm -hmm. uh, it has implications for many many things but even white asparagus many uh products that used to be ranked lower than in honshu now have come up and and hokkaido has really become a agricultural center or uh, quality products? Yes, right now, Hokkaido's population, about 5% of them are involved in agriculture. Oh, but interestingly, that 5% produces 22% of entire Japan's wow. food, food wow. agriculture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the farmers are very rich right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all have Mercedes and Audis. And, and again, you know, being in Hokkaido is being not of Japan because uh, my cousins and so forth eat uh, corn on the cob, a grill. They eat strawberries. They eat a lot of yogurt, cheese, mm. and, and lamb. Which is yes. and lamb in Jisukan, which is a unique kind of uh, grilling um, uh, dish in Hokkaido. Lamb isn't eaten that much outside Hokkaido. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. yeah, lamb is not very popular outside of Hokkaido, and then Hokkaido it's called Genghis Khan, yes. just like the you know the historical character right. Genghis Khan. Uh, it's a very popular dish. I would say most families probably eat it once or twice a month. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. yeah so again, uh, the natural that 
uh, even today, um, uh, to before you know, 50 years ago, nobody from Tokyo would go and, and, and live in Sapporo. Mm -hmm. But Sapporo has gra gained a, a great reputation for being a livable place. And there isn't that much um, uh, uh, mass transit, you know, compared to other cities. So, so a lot of my cousins and so forth use cars. It's much more like the U.S. in, in, in some ways, in the suburbs. Yes, I would agree. It's yeah. a lot more uh, like the mainland. You right. know, you, you would have to have a car to get right. around. It's such a, such a large uh, area. I mean, when we talk Hokkaido Island, we right. say island, but right. really we're talking about Kyushu and Shikoku combined <laughs> right. together. Right. So it's yeah. almost like one third of Japan, right. actually. And when you look, at, look on it on a, on a map, it doesn't seem that big. Yeah. Yeah. But if you look at this, uh, the the per square yes. mile, it's pretty big. Actually. It's, it's yeah. huge, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a livable place, Sapporo. Uh, and there are vast areas of the, of the city that are underground, and people uh, go to, go to their workplace without you know coats. Sometimes they just go inside and come back. Pop oh up yes, they they put a yeah. lot of effort into uh, developing the the subway. Right. Uh, they they connect several subway stations now yeah. around the central part of Sapporo. So winter time, you can walk underneath the city, right. and yeah. it's if you have your coat on, you actually start sweating. That's right. It's so warm <laughs> down down there. Yeah. It, it is a it is a unique uh, uh, place again because uh, the that uh, looks like a New England town, commons in the middle, a beautiful, you know, tower. Uh, and it's not that overpopulated. I mean, uh, there's some places in towns um, in like Kushiro and Nemuro where uh, houses are like, you know, uh, you know, third of a mile <laughs> apart and, and people have space, uh, a lot of space, uh, whereas in Tokyo and in the Kansai area, it's, it's very, very yes. uh, tight. So we're wrapping it up uh, for another episode uh, on Hokkaido. We hope this will pro uh, promote Hokkaido to Hawaii and to the world. This is Ray Tsuchiyama, another episode of Business in Hawaii.